comes in, they get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> we decided to have a bit of a The bet was, whoever won got a shot, the other one misses, <laughs> the night after. <laughs> so I said to Macca tonight, come up in the car. I said, same bet, Macca. He went, no, I'm fucking fed up with your misses. <laughs> <laughs> We're working together five or six years now. <coughs> Believe it or not, we do actually like each other. We're similar characters, and we're not bad at football either. <laughs> I get a phone call one day, I said, Maka, I've got one for us. It's a wee lodge. He says, he says, a lodge? He said, I've never spoken at a lodge. I said, don't worry, Maka. I said, you'll be me. He went, how much? So I'll tell him, he went, I'll be there. <laughs> but I've no spoke at a lunch. I said, don't worry, you're with me. I didn't tell him it was in lunch zero in Kilburn. Oh, <laughs> oh, He's walked in, had a look around. He says, you fucking bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen and lady, that night you get standing and raised, he was brilliant. Three weeks later, we get a phone call, Maka. I said, why is that? He says, go late, I've got us one. It's a wee pub in Coat Bridge. I know full well there's no fucking Rangers pubs in Coat Bridge. <laughs> I said, back here, you're fucking at it. He says, don't worry, you're with me. <laughs> <laughs> I walked in the place, the place is called the Barnyard. I walked in, there's tricolors up there, there's two crucifixes cruci there, the Pope's there. I'm like, you're a fucking bastard. <laughs> I can't stand there amazing. And then I'm going to home. <laughs> <laughs> when he played for a big club, he asked to do different things. One of the first things he asked to do was uh, take the Rangers Legends team to Belfast to play Linfield. Now, as you've read in the papers, I've been going to Belfast for the best part of 25 fucking years. I know what it's all about there. I've got the Rangers Legends there. I came there on the Friday lunchtime for the game Saturday against Linfield. We go out for lunch. Good bevy, watch the race in the afternoon, more bevy. Out at night, watch the racing, more bevy. Night up till five in the morning, the morning of the game. Just the usual way, just fucking warm up for us. <laughs> <laughs> On the morning of the game, Saturday morning, I get a phone call, goalie. You bring a couple of players around to the Rangers shop in the middle of Belfast. I said, no bother at all. I'll bring Gordon Jury and John Brown. Now at the time, guys, it was still a bit dodgy over there, still a bit naughty. I knew what it was all about. You get picked up at nine o'clock in the morning by two armed guards and three bodyguards. Gordon Jr. has never been to Belfast in his life. I don't know what he did wrong over there, but I certainly didn't think he fucking deserved that. <laughs> <laughs> so me and my pals went to the ranger shop. Now it's fucking bummed. There's 50 or 100 people in the queue outside and we're there for two hours. It's getting late. Me and Gordon Jury are at the door waiting with the two armed guards and the two bodyguards. And John Brown is the other side of the shop signing autographs. And we're late. The big boy with a gun turns to me and says, Goalie, we need to fucking go here. We need to give him a shout. I said, No bother at all. I went, Oh, bother! <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen head the deck and two get a fucking gunner. <laughs> we play the game, we had a good day, blah blah, good night out. On the Sunday morning, I get a phone call, same guy. Goalie, normal time, normal place. On the Shankill Road, there's a pub at the top of the road called the Mountain View Bar. Every Sunday life when I'm there, that's where I drink, nine o'clock in the morning, to get me club, it's been there for a million years. I'll get the Rangers legends in there, nine o'clock in the morning, morning, showing them the history of the Shankill Road. A, a guided tour type thing. I've got them all a free drink. I get it for nothing in there. I've got all the boys a drink. And I'm sat, I can't drink in the morning. Lunch times I'm fucking growing. <laughs> <laughs> I get a wee half a lag of shandy because I'm thirsty. There's a wee old guy next to me called John Trainer. He's 84 year old. He's, drink, he's drank in there for 70 odd years. He's weak character. I've turned to John and went, John, you know this guy's. The first one's always shy me, man. He turned to me and went, go late. There's only one way around that, son. You buy two and you stand your second one first. <laughs> <laughs>
There's a guy in there drinks in there, a boy called Billy White. Now White is an old character, he's 85 year old. He spent several years in Her Majesty's Hotel <laughs> in Belfast. I don't like it anymore, if you know what I mean. But why had a wingman called Curly Joe? Wherever White he went, the wingman Curly Joe was on his shoulder for 50 years. 50 years he watched his back. He came to Glasgow for the old phone game. No tickets. My boy said, I'll get a couple of tickets, but it's in the Celtic bit. Why he's turned to Curly Joe, he says, what do you think? He says, fuck it, we've come all this way, we'll just go. So they end up at Parkhead in the Celtic bit. Not too fucking happy as you can imagine. <laughs> Five minutes gone, Celtic score. So they've had to stand up and sit down, otherwise they're going to get a kick in. <laughs> <laughs> he turns to Curly, he says, let's fuck off now. He says, listen, we fuck off now, they're going to clock us, we're going to get a kick in. Wait till half time. Good thinking, Curly. 50 years, watch his back. <laughs> Five minutes before half time, Rangers score. Why he gets up? Get it right, fucking up you! Curly goes down there, sit down you fucking idiot. Too late, they've clocked him. Here, you've had your pass now, come on. Let's go to London for this pass. He's going to have a selfie. Let's come in on next. Time, we'll fucking sneak out at half time, great idea Curly. <laughs> he said, but we'll sneak out at half time, they'll be waiting for us. Wait till the second half, two minutes, we'll fuck off. Good thinking. <laughs> two minutes in the second half, we just scored again. <laughs> Why he gets up, get it right, fuck it up, he's getting the scarf out and everything. Twenty we came, true story, twenty we came down and getting the kick in of a fucking lifetime. He woke up on the Royal in Glasgow on the Tuesday morning, Joel Wyatt, Broken arms and broken ribs, he's fucked. As he's woke up, <laughs> Joe White, he looks at the end of the bed, and Curly Joe is at the end of the bed, not a fucking marker. <laughs> he looked at Curly and went, What fucking happened? He says, What happened? We scored you up, we scored again, you get the scarf out, they came down and give you a fucking doing your crackpot. He went, Oh fuck, I remember, I remember. He looked at Curly, not a marker. He went, Ho, oh, oh. ho. How did you not get a kick in? He says, don't be stupid, I was the first to fucking hit you. <laughs> 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 when I was camping the house for three years out of the four years I was there. Alec Miller was a manager. Made me the captain of the house for three years. No wonder you get a fucking sack. That'll be him the now. <laughs> 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 so he said, go here and see your pro, I'm going to make you the captain of the club, three years. Now as captain of the Hibs, used to go to Ibrox, and I wondered why, for guys that support other clubs apart from Rangers and Celtic, I wondered why every time I went to Ibrox as captain of the Hibs, Rangers get every fucking decision. <laughs> every fucking decision. It didn't bother me because I knew I was going to end up there. <laughs> <laughs> I was just inquisitive. <laughs> but I found out when I first went to Rangers. I'm in the dressing room for the first, one of the first games at home, and the dressing room's this size. Every fucking decision. I wondered why. Dressing room door opens, and walks the referee straight up to Walter Smith. How are you doing, gaffer? <laughs> <laughs> As you don't say assistant, Ash, all the best today, big man. <laughs> Coisy, do you want to see the district after the game? Couple of babies. Jolie, <laughs> all the very best at the big club, son. It's a fucking referee. <laughs> you wouldn't buy you one fucking Everest. The referee was called Brother Bobby Tate. <laughs> <laughs> as you well know, my first month at Ibrox is a fucking washer. In my first month, Replacing Chris Woods is not too easy, by the way. Fucking legend, five years brilliant. In my first month, I fucked us up the European Cup <laughs> against Sparta Prague, single-handedly. <laughs> <laughs> I fucked out the League Cup semi-final at Hamburg against Hibs, single-handedly. <laughs> Went to Tynecastle, I let one in from 40 yards from Scott Kraft, 
I didn't mind that, I bet him for the first goal that day. <laughs> 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 so my first month was a fucking washer. Now, in my first month, we used to eight aside across the pitch on a Friday morning. That was our thing. But it was a great tempo. We didn't do anything else. The players were used to kick fuck out of each other. It was played at a match fucking it was brilliant. Eight aside across the pitch, and it used to be the English against the Scots. Oh. Archie Knox would take the English, the Gaffer would take the Scots. But it get too one-sided. You have to change it to the foreigners against the Scots. And it get too one-sided. So then we change it to those with a wife against those without a wife. And we get too one-sided. We then change it to those with a driving license against those without. You get the fucking hang of this, didn't you? Too one-sided. The gaffer then made it Catholics against fucking Protestants. You've got a two one fucking side in ended up Catholics against fucking me. I still won. I'm going to take the left three. Come on, I'm going to your side across the pitch. And it's still no way. And I'm making sales everywhere. Fucking bad. So, every day of training for seven years at Ibrox, I played against McCoy's. If I can save against McCoy's, I'll save against anybody. John Brown makes me golf, but I said I'll do the training because that's my guy. Eight side across the place. It's still nil with a minute to go. And I'm fucking flying. Alan McCoy picks the ball up 40 yards out and decided to hit it. I thought, you cheeky bastard. I'm no bad for that distance. That's going to But he's just hit it. Right? And it's a wee squiggly bobbly one. As it's coming, I'm thinking, I'll get the ball. Out to David Robertson, up the line, in the box of R.K. Lee, he scores against those with no wife and no fucking car. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. <laughs> I forgot to pick the fucking ball up. <laughs> As the ball's coming, I've looked at David Robertson, I down for the ball, too late, through my fucking legs. Last minute, we won the only training session. As you can imagine, I'm fucking raging. I sit first seat, I got to you walk in the dressing room, first seat, that was my bad. Alan McCoy was the first thing. <laughs> He's walked past me, turned round, a million pound for you, you prick. <laughs> <laughs> oh fucking really? <laughs> <laughs> Next one in was his wee mucket, you and your hand. Oh, Coisty, Coisty, we should have fucking get Chris Woods. <laughs> oh fucking really? <laughs> I'm thinking the next one that walks in and says a word, I'm gonna fucking smash him. <laughs> the gaffer walked in. <laughs> I suddenly changed my mind. I threw my legs last minute and he stood in front of me for three, four seconds. And I'm like, fucking hell. But he looked at me and shook his head. He went, nah. I said, all right, gaffer, I should have kept my legs shut. He says, no, you prick. He says, your mother should have kept her legs shut. <laughs> <laughs> when you get to Rangers, you, you get categorised, I'm sure it's the same at Celtic. You get thick players, you get great players, and you get fucking legends. I'm going to mention one guy here, Michael will talk about him later on, comes into the first category. Boris Johnson, thick as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic player. A great lad, fantastic player, thick as fuck. <laughs> when he signed for Rangers, he get a death threat from the IRA. Now trust me, when you get one of them, it's not too fucking clever. <laughs> as me and Donald Finley found out the same day. <laughs> <laughs> the difference with Boris was, it was fucking coded. <laughs> so now he's writing the shine. <laughs> Two weeks into his contract, he bought a brand new Mercedes, we two seat a sports car thing. The low tie rocks with four miles on the clock. He get in the car for the very first time, two weeks after the death threat. He's got in the car and shut the door. As he shut the door, it's one of them cars with an electric seatbelt. As he shut the door, the seatbelt came out and caught him right in the back of the shoulder. <laughs> now, when you want a death threat from the IRA, big man, calm up. When you want a death threat from the IRA, 
and there's something broke in their back in the car for the very first time. <laughs> you tend to fucking shit yourself. <laughs> He's then put his hands up. <laughs> so I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't have signed for the orange bastards. <laughs> his mistake was telling us. <laughs> A wee nod who we were going to sign a couple of weeks beforehand. Basically, so we could get a fucking bet on it. <laughs> <laughs> the gaffer walked in this particular morning, we're all sat, ready to go to training, and he says, Oh, fly in 10 minutes, we've signed a new player. Bill of the 90s, we're like, We're flying, but who the fuck we signed? We don't need anybody. We're doing alright, don't we? Next thing, in walks David Dodds with Lorenzo Amoruso. <laughs> Now yeah, that's a fucking contradiction in terms of <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this big thing walks in, six foot four, Lorenzo, long hair, Italian stallion, supermodel. And we're like, who the fuck's this? <laughs> hey, ciao, Lorenzo, Lorenzo. Alan McCoy was the golden boy of Scottish football at the time, pin up boy at Ibrox. He's looking at uh, Amoruso, he's like, who the fuck's this? <laughs> <laughs> He's not too happy because the super bundles walked in. Hey, Joe, Lorenzo, Lorenzo. We've got big man, you come and sit right here. We sat in right next to the coys. The coys is fucking busy. Day <laughs> <laughs> days it was collar and tie suits, rightly so every day for training. Lorenzo's taking his jacket off, he's shutting his tie, and he's built like a boxer, he's fucking massive. And because he's lucky, he went, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> he's then dropped his trousers, he's got thighs like thunder, Lorenzo. And because he looks, he went, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Amrus has got the biggest dick I have ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> he dropped his choice, and because he looked, he went, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Now Lorenzo's first month in Glasgow, he enjoyed himself. Half a Glasgow friend went him and his big willy, right? <laughs> so one Sunday night, we're victorious. God rest them, she's a winner. <laughs> <laughs> he wore a black armband for three fucking weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Lorenzo's in there, victorious. And I'm with Lorenzo. All the boys are out, two o'clock in the morning, looking for the women, not the goalie. <laughs> Next to the big man, the big supermodel, because whatever he fucks out, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> and Gokin's a fucking stupid. <laughs> this wee blonde thing comes up to him, she heard about him and his big willy, and she's only up to there in him. Oh. She's fucking gorgeous. And she looks him up and down, and she went, Lorenzo, are you all in proportion? He says, girl, if I was in proportion, I'd be nine foot four. Fucking <laughs> 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 shut yourself and bolt it. <laughs> Flossy followed by a goalkeeper. What <laughs> <laughs> thick as fuck. <laughs> I get a phone call four or five years ago, goalie. Now, the Celtic boys know this as well. In America, they've got NASA, North American Rangers Supporters Association. In Celtic, they've got the same. It's a convention, they all everyone gets together. Basically, it's a bevy and a sign song. The government in, in the Southern Hemisphere, also Oceanic Rangers. It's basically Dubai, Hong Kong, Australia, New Zealand. Boy Rings White says, goalie, you can bring anyone you want, ex player. Four days in Dubai, four days in Hong Kong, and a week in Perth for the convention. Everything paid for, free drink. A well done deal. <laughs> <laughs> Any player you want. So I've rang all the good guys. They're on a holiday. <laughs> so I had to ring fucking Lorenzo. So I said, big man, you're the first boy I've rung. Any <laughs> <laughs> fancy four days Dubai, Hong Kong, and a weekend prep for the convention? He says, fucking right, go we're going. Four days in Dubai, golf, fantastic hotel, gorgeous. Four days in Hong Kong, fucking mental. Now in Hong Kong, there's 150 of them. They don't like the Celtic, they don't like the Catholic thing, the bigoted bastards are in the wee bubble. It's fucking brilliant, right? <laughs> basically, basically been asked to fucking leave Scotland because of it. <laughs> 150 of them are in this do on the Tuesday night with the women. And me and Lorenzo. And the boy comes up, I was I never had a drink for three and a half years, a good seven years ago. I was off the drink three and a half years. Why? And the boy come because I was going to die, basically. Fuck <laughs> 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 that. Never spoke. I was seen after this off the drink. And my son ran 
Penelope went, Gully, you're gonna die a fuck old. <laughs> <laughs> So this boy comes up, he says, Goldie, drink or something. No, no, Coca-Cola, thank you. He said, Lorenzo, drink. He said, no, no, Lorenzo doesn't drink. Billy's. Lorenzo doesn't drink for Lent. Oh. No, no, that, that's your own fucking answer. <laughs> <laughs> and then said, the boy comes up, Goldie, I said, no, fine, thanks. Lorenzo, no, no, Lorenzo doesn't drink. Lorenzo doesn't drink for Lent. I'm at right big shops here, office. <laughs> I said, you know, knock it on the fucking head. Jump that fish. I said, they look like all that Celtic thing, the Catholic thing. Knock it on the fucking head. I said, tell me on antibiotics or something. <laughs> got it, got it. I see, see, go, see. I swear, guys, five minutes later, the boy comes up. I said, no, I'm fine. Lorenzo, drink. That must be, I'm fucking dripping a sweat. <laughs> Lorenzo went, no, 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 Lorenzo doesn't drink. Lorenzo's on antibiotics. <laughs> for Len. <Lynn. laughs> <laughs> 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 Very great place. Yeah. Have you ever had the pleasure of playing with Coop and Baxter? Jinky, George <laughs> Best, I never had that pleasure. Lucky <laughs> <laughs> I like, I'm Lucky yeah. enough, I played with Loudup and Gascoigne. Yeah. 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 When he came to the club, we knocked off straight away, best of parts of this day. When he signed, they called us the odd couple. <laughs> one was obviously now called the looking free living family man. The other one was called Brian. <laughs> <laughs> we fell out once in our life, ever. Easter Road. My bet every week was £100 on Alan McCoy to score the first goal. Every week. When it was 5 to 1 or 5 to 4, 100 quid. That was my bet. 6 to 4 Easter Road he was. I'm thinking. Of course, he scores the first goal every fucking week, six to four, 225 in my bin. That'll pay for the wine for the night. Brilliant. <laughs> After I've gone the game, Loudup gets the ball in the hips box, beats three or four players, down for a penalty to the Glasgow Rangers. Happy birthday, goalie. Of course, he takes the penalty, 225. I've looked up and Loudup's got the ball under his arm. Obviously, he's going to throw it to Coisey. I've looked up again. Loudrop is now putting the ball on the penalty spot. <laughs> By which time, I'm on the fucking halfway line. Mousy, <laughs> <laughs> get the fucking ball off him! Mousy! Julie, Loudrop had the penalty and fucking scored. Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> fucking raging. But the referee of Blue Frame Croatsman, there was players in the box, so we've got to retake the penalty. Obviously, Coyce is going to take this one. No. Now don't throw the ball in the fucking spot again. I'm doing their half. Coyce, get the fucking ball off him. <laughs> Too late. I've got behind the penalty and Jim went fucking saved it. I'm doing cartwheels across the street. <laughs> 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 Yeah, you, you fucking prick. <laughs> and you start taking penalties for the fucking Rangers. I say, he fucking takes them. He says, goalie, goalie. In Europe, whoever gets brought down for the penalty, takes the penalty. I says, you're not in fucking Europe, now you're in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking takes them. <laughs> I just swear my life. Boys have scored the first goal of the second half. I gave him 225. And me and Brian went out and got absolutely fucking wellied. <laughs> the only time we've ever fell out. And then he made the fatal mistake. He invited me. And wife number, <laughs> wife number two out of three, <laughs> to be fair. Our wives have not got names, our ex-wives, they get fucking numbers. <laughs> so I'm taking wife number two to Denmark for a week. Brian says to get away from the drinking culture of Glasgow. Fucking great idea. <laughs> On the Tuesday morning, he's sending away. everyone to yeah. Tivoli World. Tivoli World is like home towers for kids in Copenhagen. I don't mind about kids, pass on you go, and not interested, just leave me here. Knowing full well, he's got a wine cellar downstairs. <laughs> he fucked off to Tivoli World and left me in the house on my own with a wine cellar. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, goalie. <laughs> I've gone down the stair and it's full of red wine, Rioja, brilliant. And the six in the corner doing fuck all. I thought I'll just get one of them. <laughs> Up the stair. Bottle, big glass. Finish the first bottle, fucking lovely. I thought I'll go and get another. There's no point in getting one, so I'll be back down in ten minutes. So I've got the second and the third. I've done the second and the third. Fucking lovely. I thought I'll go and get another. 
Hey, boy, I get the fourth and the fifth. <laughs> I've done the fourth, I'm halfway through the fifth, and they come back from Tibble World. I'm on the settee, fucking happy as Larry. Ryan comes in and sees the four and a half empty bottles on the table. And he looked at me and went, oh, goalie, no, no. I said, by the way. This is too bad. 800 pounds a bottle. <laughs> Rule with 800 pounds in the six. If you break the six, that was fuck all. <laughs> so I said, you might as well finish it. <laughs> <laughs> and he never invited me back. <laughs> we then signed Paul. We had a great side and we had a fantastic dressing room. The last thing we needed was Paul fucking Gascoigne. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fucking icing on the cherry on the cake. Fucking magic. Great player, great lad. One of the nicest kind of spend you've ever met in your fucking life. It's one of the... You'd pay to go and watch him. You'd pay, he's just a fucking genius. Yeah. But he's a cunt, right? <laughs> 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 we signed a boy called Vito Gattuso. You ever met him? Yeah. yeah. Tiny guy, 16 years old. A fucking lunatic. <laughs> he couldn't speak a word of English, we know. Gaza could speak fluent Italian. He <laughs> couldn't speak English, but he could speak for his time. <laughs> so wherever Reno Gaza went, Reno's at his tail in hey, Gaza. Now Reno's a wee gimp, right? He's a wee little man gimp. Hey, you only knew two words in English. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> wee gimp. Hey, fuck off. You watch it now, my man. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> so then you sign across the pitch this particular morning. It's his old firm David Ibrox the next day against Celtic and he's kicking fuck out of everybody in the training. Just I'll be back to grab him. Just him back. So no, no, just I'll hold you. One. Stupid. Small. Tomorrow, hoops. Save it for tomorrow, okay? Okay, see, see. And he dresses him after the game, after the training. He goes to Gaza, and there's me, Koise, Loudrop, Gaza and Reno. Reno goes to Gaza. He said, hey, Gaza. And he spoke the fluent Italian sentence to Paul. And Paul went, ah, si, si. And then Paul spoke the fluent Italian sentence back to Reno. And then blessed himself. And Reno went, oh, fucking si. Bastardos. There's something fucking going on here. Brian can speak fluent Italian as a Fiorentina. I said, Brian, find out what fucking went on there. There's something not right. Reno said to Gaza, Gaza. Tomorrow, when I score the winning goal against Celtic, I drop in my debut. What's the celebration the Rangers fans really love? <laughs> you go straight up to that cold and northern, bless yourself. <laughs> 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 Give me a message that's half an hour. <laughs> See if you're saying that tomorrow when we're fucking three and a half. That guy's not bad, eh? Can I finish with a couple of it, boys? I used to play an all white strip. Now it came from an eight side across the pitch. It's still nil, and we're playing at Hearts at Tyne Castle the next day. No, get that, it's okay. And I'm flying, I'm making saves everywhere against my coys. Fucking drawing, so I was. <laughs> Last thing to a training session, they've all getting knocked across the set, Chad, get mine. I've got the covering, McCoy just slid in, hit his backside and went to the bottom corner. I went, you fucking lucky bastard, I'm fucking raging. He comes up with his arm around me and says, Goalie, I think you should wear all white tomorrow at Tyne Castle. I said, then why would that be Alistair? He said, because when I'm throwing goal and I see a big fat bastard in wine, <laughs> he says, that might put me off that split second and I might miss that fucking goal. He's got me. I said, Jimmy Bell, get man, Jimmy Bell. I said, get me all white tomorrow for Tyne Castle. Shirt, shorts, socks, gloves, a fucking lot. Tyne Castle the next day, scorching day. Now, Hearts fans don't like me because I was at Hibs. They really don't like me now. I'm at Ibrox. It's nil nil. All white, immaculate. Half an hour gone, I've not even fucking dived. Immaculate, all white. I've got a wee deck chair and a fucking table. Hello, <laughs> 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 mate. <laughs> fucking easy. <laughs> Half an hour gone, one of our boys is injured on the halfway line. I'm waiting to take a goal kick while he's getting treatment. All white, immaculate. 
as you can imagine, Tyne Castle today, you can touch them, they're that close, and I'll fucking get them. Oh, Gorham! Gorham! What? <laughs> You're nothing but a dirty, fat, orange bastard. <laughs> and? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gorham! Gorham! What? Your wife's a fucking hurt. Like, which one? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm gonna put this in the I'm white and I can hear this one boy behind me. I've known him for 25 years, Alex Spence. Tank Castle every other week, behind the goal. All white and not even dies. Christine. Go late. Oh man, I'm concentrate on the fucking. Fucking. <laughs> Go late. Now focus on the fucking. Focus. Focus. Go late. <laughs> Too late, I've lost it. Turn around, all white, immaculate. You look to me and went, look at you. You look vaginal. <laughs> I says, you stupid bastard, it's vaginal. I says, no, you're a cunt. Thanks for playing. Sorry, there's no point in the jokes. We used to play three car brag. <laughs> On the bus, coming back for the games. We played for a fiver. You have to play for something, don't take money off your pals, we have to play for something. We played Celtic at Parkhead this particular day, and we get an absolute fucking doing. And Nick did 1 0. So after the game, we're in the dressing room, red wine, white wine, champagne, sing song, fucking brilliant. Right. On the bus going back to Ibrox, red wine, white wine, champagne, three card bright. Two sit faces in the front of the bus, two sit faces in the back. McCoy's used to stand in the aisle with a can of tenants. Right? For two years, we didn't know why he stood in the aisle. He could see our car through the reflection of the fucking window. Every cheating bastard. Now, Coyce had this bad habit. When it came to McCoy's, when it was his turn, he'd have a wee drink out of his can of tenants. That's all he had, can of tenants. I'll go a fiver. He had that stupid fucking habit. On the way back to Ibrox, he's won every hand on the way home. Now bear in mind, when the same man wins all the time, he gets a bit fucking nippy. <laughs> and now he's taking the piss out of us, so we make it a tenner. No, fuck off, we don't get it. There he comes again, we drink before it. That'll be another fiver. We're fucking fed up here now. <laughs> Halfway through the game, he puts his can of tenants down, which is two thirds full, and his cards and goes to the toilet. I said to Big Hill, I said, pass his can here a minute. <laughs> we heard the story. So I'm pissing his can. Not a lot, just, to, just enough to make a difference. He came back, picks his cards up in his can. We've wafted the steam off it so he's not blocked it. <laughs> and he comes to McCoy's and there he goes. I'll go a fiver. He's <laughs> <laughs> fucking laughing, right? What are you fucking laughing at? What are you laughing at? Nothing, Coyce, you're the man, top man, super happy. Goes back to the old boy. <laughs> I'll go another fiver. And we fucking fall about again. Now he's getting suspicious. What are you fucking laughing at? What's going on? Fuck all, Coyce, you're the man, golden boot, top man. Goes back to Super Rally and he finishes it. I'll go another fiver. And we just fucking collapse in laughter. <laughs> and then he's clocked it. He says, You're a bastard. You've looked at my hand, eh? Next year, Michael will do the same at Parkhead. We get invited to the sponsors' golf day every year. You meet the Ibrox at 8 o'clock in the morning. You go to where the golf course, Glen Eagles, St Andrews, whatever it is, with the sponsors. As you can imagine, me and Mac are the characters we are. We've been drinking the I've drank with Rangers fans, Mac has drank with Celtic fans. We're, no, we're just partners that played for the club we love, that's it. So you're going out with the sponsors. I'm not too keen on the sponsors, we're all fucking hardy dars. This comes to all the fucking big games and blah blah, right? We fucking don't like them. <laughs> so we're telling the stories, it's all the fucking idiots. It's me, McCoy, Duran, John Brown, Haley, McCall, Fergie, all the fucking crack bots and the sponsors. <laughs> and we're having a good drink, 8 o'clock in the morning, on the way to golf. And I'll never forget this boy. He had a suit and a cravat. And he stopped us in our tracks. He said, <coughs> He says, Can I just say, how did you win what you won 
I said, much of the drink that you drank. Fuck off. So I tell the stories, and McCoy stopped us all in our tracks. He said, goalie. He said, we've got all the medals we want. That was a big one. He said, we've got all the shirts we want, swapping shirts all the time. He says, but they can never, ever take the memories away from us. Ever. And it went as quiet as that.